Oh, hi there, everybody. This is Freddy with LeviathanScuba.com. What the heck is a dive computer and why do you need one? We'll get to that in just a minute. So I'm going to title this video today, How to Choose a Dive Computer. We're going to cover most of the key features that are available on the different styles and types of dive computers that are out there and some of the key safety features. But really, do you need one? It depends a little bit on who you ask. If you ask me, I'm going to say absolutely yes, and I hope to convince you with this video. Uh, when you learn to scuba dive, you learn to use dive tables, right? We all did. We had to. Those were the questions we missed on our test, right? Consequently, they're cumbersome to use. Uh, you haven't dove for a little while. You can't figure it out. Nobody uses dive tables anymore. I know that guy in Nebraska, the comments below says, I still use my dive tables. Well, God bless you, bro. But I don't know of another soul that does because for 30 years, I haven't seen anybody use dive tables. And to be quite honest, if I were to give you a test right now and said, here's your dive table, your first dive was this deep, this long, you came out for 42 minutes, your second dive was here, there, there, chances are you couldn't answer the questions. And throw in switching to nitrox from regular air, no way, not going to happen. So we just don't use dive tables anymore. Um, that's where a dive computer can come in. Now, we do have quite a few people out there that dive gauges, right? Your pressure gauge, your depth gauge, it's very common. You see a lot of people still dive in those. Very simple, but it doesn't do any calculations for you. Yes, you know how much pressure is in your tank. Yes, you know how deep you are, but you have no idea how long you can stay. And when you get out, you have to go to a dive table, which you're not going to do, and to tell you how soon you can get back in, okay? So that's why a dive computer. Number one, the reason is safety. Do you know that many dive resorts, liveaboards require you to use a dive computer now? If you don't have one, they're happy to rent you one, but they require it. And their reason isn't because they want you to use one, it's because of safety. They increase the margin of safety huge. And to be quite honest with you, I'll tell you, they make a dive much more comfortable, much more fun, because there's a whole lot less thinking when you use a dive computer. You don't have to calculate anything. It can be as simple as looking at your computer and it gives you information that you need, okay? So safety, automatic calculations, all that is good, but it's just easy and simple and comfortable to use and makes your, makes your, uh, your dive so much better. And honestly, they're so good these days, right out of the box, throw it, on, throw it on your wrist, head down in the water and go, and it's going to start telling you information right now. Okay? So, um, I suppose you want to know how they work. How a dive computer works is, it's a mathematical calculation. It's based on depth, and it's based on time. It's, it all started back with the Navy dive tables right, pre-World War I, they would go and they invented these dive tables that would help keep you safe. And as people died, <laughs> they adjusted the tables until they were more conservative and they worked better. But that's basically what a dive computer does. Same thing you could do. If you went down to 50 feet, you look and you say 50 feet. If you could write it down and say, I've been here for 20 minutes. But the fact is, we're always moving and we're always changing. And so it's really impossible to get an accurate calculation without a device that can help us and do it for us. So that's why the dive computer was invented, okay? Um, before I get into the types of computers and the key features, I'm going to share with you something that I personally believe is the most important choice you need to make when you purchase a dive computer, okay? It's... Um, it's going to be air integrated or non air integrated. What I mean by that is the air is integrated into the calculation because the computer somehow knows how much you're breathing or how much is left in your tank. So how the heck do they do that? So you have dive computers that connect directly to via a hose. They connect directly to your regulator which is connected to the tank. They know exactly how much pressure is in your tank. Sometimes they connect with a transmitter. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay? 
that would be an example of a transmitter. The idea is that it's connected to your scuba tank and as you breathe and you consume the air in the tank, it knows how fast you're breathing it, how large of breaths, believe it or not, and how much you have left. And so it can, it can do a little more accurate of a job. So I'm gonna go to the basics here. Non-air integrated computer. That would be something like um, an assumption of what your saturation levels are. If I gave you the watch and I told you I just went to 50 feet and I said I stayed there for 20 minutes and I came right back up, could you tell me how much nitrogen is in my blood? No, you couldn't do it, okay? Neither can a dive computer that has no idea how much you're breathing, right? Because you, need, you would need to know, did I suck down a thousand pounds of my tank? Did I suck down 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds? Without knowing that information, you couldn't possibly know. So a non-air integrated computer doesn't have a clue how much air is in your tank, how much air you're breathing. So I'm gonna give you an example. Two divers, they go down to depth. Well, it doesn't matter, 70 feet. They both have a non-air integrated computer. One diver is new, hasn't dove before. He's breathing really fast, using up his air fast. The other guy is his instructor. He does this five times a week. He's relaxed, just barely breathing. They both have the exact same non-air integrated dive computer on their wrist. They both have the same information. When they look at it, it both says the exact same thing says dive time remaining 50 minutes. Wait a minute, this guy over here already sucked down three quarters of his tank. There's no way he's gonna make it to 50 minutes. This guy can go longer than 50 minutes because he's hardly used any air at all. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The non-air integrated computer has no idea, okay? What that diver would have to do is look at his pressure gauge, say, oh my gosh, I only have 800 pounds left. I need to go up soon. Okay, the other guy looks at his and goes, what? I still have 2,500 pounds left. I'm gonna stay, okay? So that can be the difference too of a shorter dive, a longer dive. A non-air integrated computer does not actually adjust for your profile. Mathematically, it does a little bit, but it rounds off to be safe and it's very conservative. So an example, you dive down to 100 feet, you stay there for two minutes, you come back up to 80 feet for one minute and then you finish and you come up to 60 feet for the rest of your dive. Well, it's gonna average as if you went deeper and stayed longer. And because again, it doesn't know how much you're, you're uh, breathing, it's gonna assume that because you went deeper, you cannot stay very long. So it's going to give you a dive time remaining much shorter than you could actually do, which is frustrating when you get to be a better diver, stretch your tank a little longer, and your computer keeps being the thing that sends you up when you're not ready. You know you're fine, okay? So that's a non-air integrated computer. The air integrated computer, the same exact scenario. You have two divers. They go down to 70 feet. One's breathing really hard and fast. The other one's just totally relaxed. And they look at their dive time remaining. This one says eight minutes. This one over here says 65 minutes. What's the difference? The difference is the dive computer that knows this guy can sit there for a long time, breathing nice and slow, hardly using any air out of his tank, right? And this one knows that this guy's breathing really fast. He has a lot of nitrogen in his blood and he needs to get up to the surface pretty soon. Which do you think is more safe, right? right? So in my opinion, I'm gonna say the air integrated dive computer is the safest and I hope to prove to you that they are extremely 100% reliable, okay? That you can trust your life on them. I do all the time. And most of my friends and colleagues do it as well. So now why don't we talk a little bit about the different types of computers that are out there, okay? The first one we're gonna talk about is a puck style. Puck style can be worn on your wrist, it can be worn, uh, you can mount it to your equipment. This example shows numerous colors, so it can be fun, it can be, you know, 
lighthearted and color-coded and you, yours can be personalized to you. Okay, I've taken this uh, puck style computer. I took it out of its housing so I could kind of show you what it looks like. It has hard graphics on it that are printed on the outside, but they mean something. You'll see the green, the yellow, the red, things like that. I'll discuss it in a second. You can see it's not very thick, maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter. And then it has the place for the battery in the back. Okay, very simple liquid crystal display. It's, uh, it's limited on the information that's in there, but a puck style computer <coughs> is going to give you the basics that all dive computers will. That is your depth, your length of dive in time, so the time of your actual dive. Um, it, will, it will give you the surface timer. When you get out of the water, it'll start counting down. And um, your ascent rate tells you how fast you're going up, whether you're going up too fast, things like that. Some may have the date with a clock and a, and a timepiece in it so you can tell what time of day it is, things like that. They're pretty simple. That's why this one only has one button. Not a lot to do with it. Not a lot to see on it, to go back and forth. Your more basic ones aren't even going to have any kind of a back screen light. Uh, some of them will. You want that if you plan on doing night diving. Cause you, or even in a wreck or cave or something, you can see, you know, if you have a, a light. Um, I think uh, we have a graphic that shows the differences, how you can take a puck style computer. You, there, that's the exact same dive computer. One is in a, what, we, what we'll call a console that also has your pressure gauge. And it might even have a compass on the back. And the other one there is a wrist mount. So you can choose which one you like better. I have a preference for you if you're a newer diver. Um, sometimes, you know, the amount of gear you take on a trip and you bring in your dive bag can be a little daunting. So if you have a non-air integrated dive computer, which the puck computers are, you always have to have a pressure gauge to look at. It's always going to be attached to your tank. So why not just put your computer in the little console on your, with your pressure gauge? Just one piece of equipment connected to the regulator. Simple, easy, don't lose it, okay? Um, generally, the more affordable dive computers out there are the Puck styles. They're going to range anywhere from about $200 up to $400. It might have a couple extra features on them. Like I said, you can get some pretty ones, make it, you know, personal color choice, things like that. Um, Liquid crystal display. So one thing about that that's kind of nice is the batteries last a very long time with liquid crystal displays. The negative side of it is that sometimes they're a little more tricky to see, especially for people like me, that I need readers or, you know, you're getting older eyes, things like that. But if you have young eyes, the liquid crystal display, good to see. The batteries last a good long time, things like that, okay? Um, you'll want to do your research just to see if you want a one button or a two button or a three button. Just depends on the different, you know, changes that those buttons control allow you to get to different features of it, okay? Remember, you will still need a pressure gauge because it's not going to do any calculations for you based on actual air usage. So if it says you're done diving and you still have 2,000 pounds of air in your tank, you're not done diving unless you were deep for a while or something like that. <clears throat> okay, so the next uh, type of dive computer you have is what I'm going to call a console. A console style okay so the console style is basically like on the screen there much larger screen still liquid crystal display on that one you can see that it has a compass built in but it also has the pressure built in uh, and probably for the past 15 years this has been the most popular type of dive computer okay and you have numerous different sizes to choose from, different size screens. Some are full color, really bright, like the Sage right there. Um, three button computer, also that has user changeable batteries, which is another feature of the console computers nowadays. They've made some of them where you can't change it, but it's rechargeable. You just plug it in, charge it up, good to go. <clears throat> they have some of them where the dive shop still has to change it for you. Uh, and then others where you can change it yourself on the fly. The Sage computer takes a CR123 battery. They're very cheap. You buy two or three of them, take them on a trip with you. If it goes dead, it warns you ahead of time. 
But the trade-off with that is you're going to get a nice bright color screen. Very nice to see. Now, some of the keys to the console computers are <clears throat> a lot more features. They are, they are high-end. They can do multiple gases. Many of the features that we talk about in the feature section for the high-end computers are in the console computers. A little bit of a drawback is they're a little heavier, they're a little bulkier to take, they're bigger, <clears throat> they weigh more, things like that, and they still attach to your regulator, okay, via a hose. Now, one neat feature about this, though, is if you are done diving, you've rinsed your gear, and you want to disconnect the hose, you just pop it off. You take this into the your hotel room or the bar with you or whatever and start writing all the information in your log. You got it. Um, they come in a nice little carrying case that's protected. This, this atomic cobalt here fits in a nice protected case, so you throw that in your carry-on. It's on the plane with you. You got a very expensive piece of equipment here, but it's with you. It's not necessarily with the reg. When you're ready to use it again, this part stays on the reg. You just plug it back in. You're good to go. Okay. The feature range, uh, the higher end units with the console computers, they're going to range from about $500 up to about around $1,000. <clears> They've got all the features of the puck plus many more. Okay. A uh, key part of it, just remember that the, uh, the pressure gauge is built right in. So they are air integrated and all the benefits of air integrated goes with that. It knows your exact scenario, where you're at, how much you've consumed, and it's much more accurate than the, uh, any of the others. Okay? <coughs> okay. Now, next style we'll get to is what I'm going to call the watch style. Um, <clears throat> there have been a few of these out for a while. The ones you're seeing on the screen have a liquid crystal display. They are non-air integrated. They're on the affordable end of range, so the features are going to be a little bit more simple, a little more basic, okay? And, uh, but the watch style, divers have been, or manufacturers have been trying to get to the watch style for a while. Uh, it's always been a desirable thing to have something kind of small on your wrist and just handy to look at, quick and easy. Okay, again, it doesn't mean it's a higher end computer because it's a watch style. That's just the style. So this one, for example, the Oceanic Geo, it's a non-air integrated dive computer. You see that it has a round face and uh, we have a graphic that kind of shows uh, the differences between some of these uh, round faced uh, non-air integrated watch styles and then you can get to the square faced ones like the Peregrine by uh, Shearwater. It's also non-air integrated. You can see the fun colors, a little bigger screen. That one happens to be full color. So that's kind of a benefit in itself. So even within the non-air integrated, you can get a few more features, things like that. Okay. Once you get up into the higher end of the watch style, just know that it doesn't mean anything to have a small screen. That's the Perdix right there. You can customize that screen to be any color you want. Any piece of information on that screen can be any color and various different brightnesses. And that's the Tarek, uh, one of the newer computers by Shearwater. And it's the size of a watch. Literally, you could wear that under a tuxedo at dinner and then take it out and go diving with it and come back and they're beautiful. Different colors and things like that, but the, the screens are very bright and they are <clears throat> easy to see, high resolution. Uh, I have people that remark all the time, I can see your dive computer from 10 feet away and uh, some of the key features we talk about on the high-end ones, we'll get into that as well. So it's kind of nice to have this. Now, how the heck can this be air integrated? I mentioned before that there's a thing as a, a transmitter and this transmitter screws on to your regulator and it sends a signal when the plunger is made, when you turn the pressure on, it sends a signal to the dive computer and it tells you the pressure in the tank. Likewise, with every breath you take, it knows. So does your dive computer, okay? When you get down lower on air, it knows how deep, how long, all the benefits of air integrated diving, okay? So, <clears throat> some of the higher end, um, well, I should say the highest end dive computers money can buy are actually wrist computers. They just have a lot of those features and things like that built in. 
The general pricing for a wrist computer is going to go anywhere from 700 to about 1800 bucks. Okay, and that's going to just depend on features and benefits, things like that. Okay, um, now let's talk a little bit about when you're searching for a dive computer, what kind of features do you want? What kind of features to consider that they're made with them? And I would do some of this on paper before you go out there and you go hunting. Now, you can always look at it at one of our reviews on an exact dive computer. For example, the, the Tarek. You can look at our review of the Tarek and uh, it'll tell you all the features of that exact computer. What I'm getting ready to get into is features to consider across the board on all different dive computers, okay? So all of them are going to have the basics. So if all you need is to track your depth and time, every dive computer is going to do that. And it's going to be real easy. Remember when I talked about comfort and safety and, and ease? You look at your screen. If it's green, you're good. If it's yellow, caution. If it's red, something's wrong. That simple on most of these dive computers. Some of them will have a graph as the bubbles rise or as the graph rises. What happens? It goes from you're good to caution to danger, things like that. Um, an ascent rate is going to show you how you're rising and it's going to give you an alarm of some sort. So we'll talk about that as a feature. Some of them beep, some of them vibrate, some of them can do both. Some of them have LEDs that flash. You have to determine the one you're looking at, what it does and what you think you prefer. I'm hard of hearing. <clears throat> I can't hear an underwater alarm on a dive computer. So I have to have the haptic feedback, the vibration. I love it. It's great. Okay. Um, so some of the different ones also offer different modes. So you can use the same dive computer for different types of activities that you're doing. For example, free diving. Free diving doesn't, you don't stay down long and you're not breathing air. So you don't need to know how much air is in a tank. So you can put it in free diving mode if you want to. And if you're a free diver, maybe you just buy a free diving computer. Don't spend the big money on the other things for scuba unless you like to do both. If you do both, then you put it in free diving mode. Okay. Sets the timer. You know how deep you went, you know how long you've been in the water, things like that. Gauge mode. Gauge mode is simple. All it is is the same thing as gauges. You look at it, it tells you the pressure in the tank, the depth, the time, your countdown timers when you get out, things like that. When you're in scuba, what they usually call the normal mode, it's going to track all your calculations for you. How saturated are you? How long have you been out of the water? How less saturated are you now? Uh, decompression times, things like that. It's going to calculate all of that for you. Okay. Now you can get them much more technical if you want to. <clears throat> I'm not covering technical computers here simply because the sky's the limit. You can buy computers that you can take to 600 feet. Well, I'm never going to take one there. So I'm talking about recreational dive computers for the most part here. But if you want to do dual gases, <clears throat> you want to do nitrox, that's a feature. Most divers do, at some point in their career, do nitrox. It is the number one specialty among all the different agencies. They learn enriched air diving and they love it. So I love it. So I want my dive computer to be able to handle nitrox. If you're going to do a closed circuit rebreather, you're going to need a dive computer that can do that. Okay? A couple of these can. Most of them can't. <clears throat> so the number one feature, in my opinion, is user-friendly. Um, it has to be something you're going to use. It has to be something you're going to uh, understand when you look at the screen. It can't be so technical that you have to relearn how to use the computer on the plane ride to your diving destination and then hope you got it. It should be simple. Many of them today have done a really, really good job at making them simple. So don't think that one button is better than four buttons. <clears throat> I quite prefer the four button computers because it gives me more control over the information. They're not harder to learn. Some of the buttons are simply the back button. You hit the this button, it always goes back one screen. Gee, I need to know how to get back. So that's a great button to know, right? <clears throat> uh, some of the features you might look into too are, are um, like the strap size. Many dive computers come with an extender strap because you might use it with a dry suit or a thicker wetsuit. Some of them just flat out come with a very long strap and you trim it to the length you like it. 
Um, others have different kinds of mounting. Hard mounting, you can mount it to hoses. Uh, you can mount it to hard equipment that you have if you carry a camera housing. You can mount them to, um, you know, just all, the sky's almost the limit really. There's bungee. Um, I, the one I use actually, I wrap a, a style of a surgical tubing, a bungee, and it's not going to fall off. It can't, even if you cut it, one part of it's going to hang on, things like that. So uh, there's just different types of mounting to, to, you can look into and see. Plus you can get personalized colored bands, colored housings, all kinds of crazy things for them to make it the same, make it the way you like it. <clears throat> I will also say that the customizable settings of your higher end dive computers is very, very important. Maybe not now while you're first starting to look for dive computers, but let's say you're colorblind. Believe it or not, many men are. Well, you can adjust every color on that screen. If you can see gray and you can't see brown, then don't use brown. If you can't see yellow and green and yellow look the same to you, then make one of the pieces of information orange and the other one blue. So you can completely customize them. Also, not just the coloring, but how much information do you want to see on your screen? I'm the guy that wants to see as little as possible the, what I really need to see. Do I care what date it is when I'm 60 feet down? No. Do I need the date on my screen? No, I don't. I don't even care about the actual clock, the time right now. I do care about my dive time. I do care about dive time remaining, no decompression, things like that. But I don't care about some other pieces. Frankly, I don't care about what temperature it is. So I set my main screen to be those things that I want every time I look, it's the same, and it works perfect. Now, if I do need to see the temperature, one button cycles to the next piece of information, and then after a timeout, it goes back to my original screen. I love it. It's great. <clears throat> okay, um, I think I drilled it home a little bit with dive time remaining. You want it to be accurate. You want to know how much time you have remaining. That information is important. So the difference between a non-air integrated and an air integrated computer, that's a feature of a high-end dive computer, dive time remaining. Um, no decompression limits. You want your dive computer to automatically tell you. You don't want to have to program it. You don't want to have to monkey with it and go crazy and try to figure it out and this and that. You want it to do it for you automatic. I can take this dive computer right now out of the box, charge it up, throw it on my wrist, I can go diving. I stay too long, too deep, and, and automatically it's going to start vibrating, flashing at me, and beeping. And I'm going to look at my screen and in red, flashing on the screen, it's going to say 80 feet for six minutes. What do you think that means? Go to 80 feet for six minutes. You finish there, six minutes. Then it says 42 feet, you know, eight minutes. What do you do next? 42 feet, eight minutes. You just took a potentially lethal situation, a dangerous dive, most likely by accident, and you turn it into a very safe decompression dive. And it was because of what you wore on your wrist. That's one of the biggest reasons why you wear a dive computer. They're very safe. Okay? <clears throat> Auto decompression. It does it for you. Automatic. You don't have to monkey with it. It just does it. How about some other things? When you learn to scuba dive, you learn about safety stops. Well, if you're the diver that learned way back in 1980, your safety stop was 20 feet for five minutes. But how come today they do 15 feet for three minutes? Which one's better? Actually, they're both accurate. Here's the rule of thumb. This is the way you think about it, but you don't have to think about it because the dive computer is gonna do it for you. You and I go on a dive. We're just doing an easy dive, 40 feet, 30 minutes, we come back up, get the lobsters, get back on the boat. But we hit our safety stop, it stops us at 15 feet for three minutes. No problem, countdown timer, 259, 258, 257, done, surface. Great, safe, easy, everybody's good. Next dive, we actually go a little deeper this time. We go to 80 feet and we stay there for 15 minutes. And then we come up a little shallower and we actually max out our dive, okay? We're coming up to the safety stop. The same computer 
We didn't change anything. You look at it, it now says 20 feet, five minutes. It knows. What does it know? You went deeper, you stayed longer. You broke a barrier. Let's just call it 80 feet, okay? 80 feet, it knows, it changed your safety stop to protect you. How about this? Have you ever heard of a deep stop setting? Many of your newer dive computers have what's called a deep stop. It's a setting you can turn it on or off. You can adjust where you want it to stop you or you can let it auto calculate. I let mine auto calculate. So I'm on a shark research trip. We're at 145 feet tagging hammerheads. Okay, that's deep. We're coming up. It stops me at 80 feet. It vibrates on my arm. I look at it, 80 feet. I have to stay there for four minutes. I stay there for four minutes. It's like a safety stop. This is not a decompression dive. I did not stay long enough to go into deco mode. So I'm saying this is an added safety stop. They call them deep stops. It keeps me there and then it says, okay, next you go to 27 feet or 40 feet or whatever the next one is for the next period of time. Great feature. If it nags you, the type of diving you do and you hate it, you just shut it off. It never does it. You just get your normal safety stop, okay? That's a great feature in a high-end computer just meant to keep you safe. How about a compass? Many people don't use them, some people do. I didn't use them for much of my career. Now I use them all the time. I love them. When I'm leading groups, I need to know where the boat is. I need to keep track on it. You can have a compass. You can mark a heading. It'll tell you 180 degrees back. So if we go this way for 150 kick cycles or whatever, I can literally turn my compass around and it shows me a dot, digital, and I swim towards that and it's good. That's a great feature. You can shut it off. You can turn it on however you want to use it. You can remark it to a new heading if you want to while you're diving. Thermometer, you might want to know, gee, I'm kind of chilly on today's dive. I brought my three mil. I thought it was 80 degrees, but it was 76 degrees. Well, gee, I need to know I, next time I dive at this temperature, I need a thicker wetsuit, okay? Thermometer's built in. Um, actual watch, if you're gonna use it like a watch, like I told you, James Bond, he wears that. <laughs> And it tells him the date and the time, and he can go scuba diving, and go to dinner in his tuxedo later, okay? Multiple gases. How about multiple transmitters, right? So when I say multiple gases, I mean, do you dive nitrox? Well, the first dive of the day is the deep one. We're gonna dive air. Now we need to dive nitrox on the next dive. For you to try to calculate that using tables is almost impossible, it's crazy. The computer, you just switch it over to Nitrox for your second dive. You look at it, it says, oh, we need to stay out of the water still five more minutes. Then we're safe and we're green and we're good to go. Awesome. Love it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, multiple transmitters. You can take a transmitter if it's the wireless. And you know why I'm talking about transmitters? Let me just answer this question for you. I get a lot of people, you read on blogs, they say, my... Wireless transmitter lost signal. Oh yeah, mine's done that too. Does that mean they're not reliable? Heck no. 10 years ago, they were more unreliable because they would lose signal for maybe 30 to 60 seconds. Or maybe sometimes you had to put your hand on the back of your head where your computer was closer to your transmitter. Today, no. Okay, you lost five seconds. It, it still picks up with the amount of air left in your tank. It still knows the time. It just didn't register for about five seconds. If that's your reason for not buying one of these, what's five seconds out of an hour dive? It's not important at all. Um, most of the time, it's a technical issue I won't get into here, but check your sampling rate because if it misses three of them in a row, it'll flash on you. And if you have it at 60 times a second, who cares? You lost a microsecond. Right? But if you have it at five times a second, it's not going to miss three in a row. Okay. Um, downloadable dive data. That's pretty key. You can do it wirelessly. You can do it Bluetooth. Many of them you can plug them in. And you can download your dive profile, store all your records digitally on your regular, your real computer. And uh, even for insurance purposes, they're going to keep their last hundred dives stored in there, which is great. Right, just to keep the information in there. 
I'll tell you, it's, it's even interesting to see that one of these has a flashlight built into it. And when I first heard about that feature, I thought, that's kind of silly. I mean, it's not very bright. You're looking at it in the showroom. Yeah, you can see it. It's not very bright, though. I'll tell you what, now it's, I love the feature. I show everybody when I show them that computer, and I tell them how they'll use it. If your flashlight died on a night dive, you can easily use it. It has enough light to get around. If you're in a wreck and your light conks out, you can easily get out of that wreck using just the flashlight on the dive computer. How I used mine, I'll confess to you, was on a uh, British Virgin Islands. I was on a sailboat for some time, and on a cloudy night, pitch black in the middle of the night, woke up, had to go to the bathroom. I was not used to the surroundings, and that flashlight, piece of cake. Just used it to get around. So let me say that what I've hoped to have done here is just help educate you a little bit on some of the features to consider, some of the different choices that are out there. Hopefully you don't get hung up on, you know, some just piece of junk. If you stick to good quality name brand equipment, you know, it's going to do you well. And my goal was to educate you just a little bit, hopefully keep you a little bit more safe, maybe save you even a step of buying the wrong computer and then having to resell it later. So that's what we do. We do it to help. If you have any questions, please feel free to get a hold of us. We're happy to try to aim you in the right direction. Heck, check out our website. You can check out all the features in the descriptions for the products. You might even find some good deals there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. You know why we do these videos. Hopefully they'll help make you a better diver, keep you in the sport longer, help you share your passion with others. If you can think of somebody else that might benefit from these videos, why don't you share it with them? That'll help us grow. And if by some chance you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, if you subscribe, we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.